good afternoon to everybody uh, today uh, i am going to present the wood properties and its utilization uh, that is very important when we talk about the uh, utilization of the forest resources so wood is one of the uh, important forest resource which uh, we have to utilize rationally so that uh, our our material can be used for different applications and we should uh, depend more and more on our indigenously produced uh, uh, forest rather than going for import uh, of the wood so uh, just to, to start with the introduction uh, uh, i will uh, say that when we talk about the wood we know that wood is a versatile natural material and it uh, is it is being used since uh, time immemorial from uh, uh, many applications starting from building construction furniture uh, paper uh, and pulp fuel wood so many applications are there for the wood uh, and uh, sometime now we have been using this uh, the different types of woods which are known as conventional or primary uh, timbers like teak wood rose wood sandalwood and but because of their over exploitation and uh, their uh, short supply they are not much being available in the uh, in the market and uh, we have to depend on the um, either uh, imported wood or on the plantation uh, timbers so this here is the list of the uh, conventional timbers or primary timbers which we have been using uh, for different applications uh, if we see uh, in india we have a good resource of uh, timber uh, species wood species particularly um, 3000 to so uh, 5000 uh, 3500 to 4000 number of species uh, are uh, have been listed and uh, but uh, out of these only uh, all wood species are not uh, having the timber value only certain number of species uh, have been identified and uh, out of this only 400 to 500 species have been tested for different properties and uh, they have been uh, recommended for different applications and uh, around 100 to 160 wood species have commercial value so this is overall a scenario of the uh, wood species in india and now we are depending on uh, upon the uh, plantation timbers which are small girth uh, start rotation plantation timbers as well as the secondary timbers which are uh, not in much use and not uh, they are not well known uh, timbers but still they have uh, some of uh, the properties which are better than uh, other timbers and uh, they can be improved upon using the modern uh, processing technologies and they can be put to wider applications the only thing is that we need to have uh, uh, identify them first and then uh, we need to improve the quality of the uh, plantation timbers which are so many institutes in India, particularly uh, our institute, IWST, and then the Forest Research Institute, Kerala Forest Research Institute, and uh, uh, Indian Plywood Research Institute, they have been working on uh, the testing of the, these wood species. And uh, then based on their properties, because uh, unless we know the property of the wood, different uh, um, quality parameters, then only we can, uh, uh, we can recommend the wood for different applications. So here I'm going to uh, give a brief in, uh, about the what are the different uh, wood properties and what are the uh, applications which de depends on uh, these properties. So uh, in this uh, slide you can see uh, wood quality parameters are we can also call wood properties. They are different properties like anatomical properties, chemical properties, physical properties, and mechanical properties. These are the different properties of wood which need to be studied uh, to know that uh, wood can be put to different uh, uses like anatomical properties consist of gross wood anatomy then uh, vessel fiber and ray morphologies similarly chemical properties of wood wood is consist of uh, cellulose hemicellulose lignin and extractive these are the main uh, chemical constituents of wood which determines its use for different applications it is like when we want to use the wood for pulp and paper and uh, composites, so we should know the chemical properties of the wood which uh, are being grown. And similarly, the physical properties, moisture content, density, uh, shrinkage and swelling, color, its texture, what are the, the different types of grains. And uh, at the same time, mechanical properties, like the properties which 
it gives the strength to the wood, uh, stiffness, compression, shear, tension, hardness. These are the different mechanical properties of the wood as a material. So these physical and mechanical properties combined are required to find the suitability of wood for different in-use applications like building, construction, flooring, furniture, um, uh, wall paneling, all those uh, types of uh, applications of the wood uh, requires the study of uh, knowledge of these properties. So we need to generate the scientific knowledge uh, for rational utilization of the uh, wood for different applications. And uh, we want to uh, recommend the screening of the right species for a right use at right price. If you want to use the wood for uh, uh, some uh, low, uh, lower end applications, then we should not use the wood which is of very high uh, quality and uh, of high price. So this can be possible by identifying the wood and knowing the wood properties. And then finally, we recommend the wood to be included in BIS, the Bureau of Indian Standard List. There are a number of standards which takes this. And then finally, uh, that, is the, uh, go, uh, that is used for wider applications. So as far as anatomical properties are concerned, I will just go into the brief of these uh, different properties one by one. Uh, anatomical properties, as we know, they are the basics for the structural uh, uh, of uh, any wood. Uh, they are uh, being seen under a microscope and uh, by naked eye also. And these properties we have to evaluate. Uh, and uh, when we try to identify the wood, it is the basis of uh, wood anatomy, wood structure. On basis of that, we, we have to certify which wood species is that. So for this, we have to use the lab facilities, uh, particularly the uh, optical microscopes, and then uh, we have to uh, use the, uh, the these uh, structures uh, for uh, identifying the wood. Like in, these are the important parameters, uh, anatomical parameters: uh, ratio of hardwood to sapwood. Uh, that is very important. Inner, inner part is called this uh, hardwood, and the outer uh, uh, less colored part or whitish part is called the sapwood in the uh, tree trunk. Similarly, the uh, ratio of early wood to late wood, then juvenile wood, the inner core of the wood, uh, uh, the tree trunk is called the juvenile wood, uh, 8 to 10, uh, up to 8 to 10 rings. Then microfibrillar angle, the fibers, and the Cellulose uh, bundles are oriented in, in the fiber in a certain direction. So that angle is very important while we uh, determine the uh, wood utilization. So this angle uh, we have to uh, measure. And then fiber morphology, fiber length, fiber diameter, fiber lum uh, lumen diameter, vessel morphology, the, uh, the, the, the uh, holes you can see here, the pores, these are called the vessels. So vessel length, vessel diameter, vessel frequency, these are very important parameters while we study the uh, wood structure. So here we can see the wood, uh, different types of woods can be classified into different uh, classes like ring porous wood, semi ring porous wood, diffuse porous wood, depending on the distribution and the size of the vessels which are present in the, here we have given the examples like ring porous wood, mulberry and oak, semi ring porous, teak is the semi ring porous, and acacia, sal, and red sander, they are the diffuse porous wood, and the conifers, the pines and firs, they are the uh, coniferous woods. So wood identification based on the, uh, this structure is very important and it is required for certification of the timber. And uh, we, uh, by identification, we can also check about the substitution of the wood or uh, when we uh, uh, try to uh, check the adulteration and frauds which is happening in the field of the wood uh, market, timber market. So we have to uh, use this uh, timber identification as a uh, right tool uh, to do that. So the, here is a process of wood identification. It's a simple process, but it is lab-based. We have to uh, do uh, take a small section of the wood sample, and then we have to see it under microscope and see it's a, it's a structure, and then it's a structure has to be uh, verified and compared with the standard wood structures which we have in the library in our institute. And after this uh, comparison only, uh, the wood structure uh, on different uh, planes like cross-section, radial tangential, and uh, longitudinal uh, uh, radial tangential, these are the different directions in which we have to uh, take the sections and uh, compare the 
work for different uh, identifications. And uh, so they are here, I have just listed a few problems, uh, like uh, uh, the many timbers, they look alike, but uh, they are in, in this very distinct. But when we see on, uh, on the naked eye, we, we cannot make them out. Like teak acacia, they look uh, very, acacia aquiliformis particularly, they look very similar timbers. And uh, sometimes this acacia wood is also called the asam teak, uh, which is uh, just to uh, confuse the buyer that it is a teak, but acacia aquiliformis is not a teak. And a rough estimate, uh, we have calculated here that if 1% of the teak consumption is replaced by the acacia, that around uh, total of 220 crores uh, is the uh, value of that uh, replacement because acacia is very cheap compared to teak uh, in the Indian market. So this kind of adulteration should, be, should always be uh, uh, checked. Similarly, uh, this hone uh, or bijasal, Tercorpus marsopium, this is very casual, uh, uh, casually used in the market in the, in the name of uh, prefix like Australian honne. Actually, Australian honne is not honne, it is not Tercorpus uh, uh, family species, it is an NCI species. Uh, similarly, the salwood, sal consists of four different uh, species, uh, but, but uh, in the market, Malaysian sal is being sold, it is not Malaysian uh, sal, it is a, a different timber. As it is called curing or campus or some other kind of uh, woods are being misnomered as a uh, sal wood, like Malaysian sal. And similarly, it's a sandal wood, it's a precious timber, uh, but it is also being adulterated with the different types of uh, woods, particularly the Osiris uh, wood, which is uh, imported uh, from African. It is also called African sandal. It uh, structure and uh, looks like a sandal, but it is not, not a sandal wood. And, uh, one has to be very cautious while using the uh, sandalwood from the market because sometimes they put the uh, sandalwood scent on this osiris and it looks like uh, sandal. So, uh, another group of properties, it is called the physical properties, uh, which is very important, particularly the moisture in the wood, uh, which determines uh, its use. Uh, uh, wood should always be dried, it should be seasoned before putting it to a different use. So we have to determine the moisture content in the wood, then, then, then density or specific gravity of the wood is very important. Sinkage, uh, hardwood color, surface hardness, grain, texture, figures, these are very important parameters. I will give uh, some brief about this moisture content. It is very, uh, you can see uh, uh, any wood product is always in the equilibrium condition with the surroundings. So we have to determine when a tree uh, is uh, uh, alive, the moisture content may be more than 100%, but uh, when we want to use the wood for different applications, it should be, moisture should be removed in a controlled way, that is uh, what is called the seasoning, and it should be brought to uh, t uh, 10 to 12%. That is the ideal condi condition of moisture content. And uh, in the lab, we can determine the moisture using a formula as per the Indian standard. So this kind of services we are providing in our institute. Uh, similarly, wood density is also very important and higher wood density as a thumb rule, uh, higher, wood, higher the wood density, uh, better the wood uh, strength. That is how uh, it is being uh, used. Uh, density is also very important too uh, and it, is, uh, it can be calculated using the weight and volume of the uh, wood. And uh, many wood properties depends on the wood density. So it is, uh, uh, should be, it, it also depends on the structure of the wood. You can see here, the different wood uh, anatomical structures uh, gives the different density to the wood, depending upon the what kind of uh, vessels it has and what are the different distributions of the vessels. Uh, larger vessels and uh, if the density is more, then density of course is going to be lower compared to high density woods where uh, vessels are small in number and also smaller in size. So the, here uh, uh, I have given this uh, density scale. You can see the density varies from 0. Uh, 0.15 to more than one. Uh, high, very high density wood like uh, uh, lignum vitae. This is very high base, heaviest wood and uh, balsa is a very lightest wood. So all other woods come, uh, are in between. You can see hardwoods are on the right side and uh, the softwoods on the left side. 
the teak is somewhere as 0.6 is the density of the teak. So all other wood species lie in this scale only, depending upon their structure and their uh, chemical uh, chemical constituents. The, another parameter which is very important is the dimensional stability, uh, particularly when we want to use the wood for furniture and flooring, similar applications, then uh, wood should be dimensionally stable. It should not have the moment when there is a change in the uh, humidity or moisture uh, uh, surround, surrounding it. So this uh, uh, the moisture, uh, this uh, sinkage is very important and we have to measure the volumetric sinkage particularly, uh, which consists of all uh, uh, directions and uh, the volumetric sinkage of the wood varies from 8% to 18%. And uh, um, when wood is seasoned, uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, dimensional stability uh, uh, is uh, very much controlled. So we have to season the wood to control uh, this dimensional stability. You can see here, when uh, wood is not seasoned, then it, uh, uh, it is associated with different types of uh, wood uh, defects, which is called twist, bow, and uh, crooking, and cupping. These are the different types of uh, defects. Uh, which are introduced into the wood planks when uh, wood is not seasoned properly. So wood should be seasoned properly to avoid these kind of uh, defects. Next is very important, uh, what is called the mechanical properties of wood. We have to determine when we apply the force to the wood or we uh, put on some load on the wood, how wood is going to behave like a material. So there are uh, different properties, uh, the mechanical properties of the wood like static bending, uh, this gives the strength and the stiffness. Similarly, we have a tension, uh, compression, uh, compressive strength along the grain and perpendicular to the grain, shear strength, nail and screw holding power, impact bending. And these are the different mechanical properties which need to be uh, studied as, as per the Indian standard. There is an Indian standard 1708, 1986, which gives the dimensions and the uh, procedure to, um, using which we have to uh, study these properties uh, of the wood and then uh, we have to compare these uh, properties uh, with the um, uh, teak values to find uh, the utility of the wood for different applications. Here, uh, what are the, the, these different properties and uh, how they are uh, required for different end uses? This table gives the uh, glimpse of that. Like a static bending is required for general engineering applications uh, in construction, doors and windows, uh, aircraft, railway sleepers, agricultural implements. Uh, similarly, impact bending uh, uh, property is required for vehicle, vehicle uh, body. Suppose we want to use some wood for uh, vehicle body, sports goods, uh, sleepers, agricultural implements. So uh, different properties are required for different applications. Compression parallel to grain is required for furniture and tool handles, similarly perpendicular to uh, compression, perpendicular to grain is required for sports goods, bearing blocks, design instrument, uh, instruments. Then uh, tension wood is required for textile and uh, 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 small accessories, uh, boat building. Uh, similarly hardness, uh, flow, uh, if you want to use the wood for floating and sports goods and bodybuilding, then uh, hardness is, uh, is required. Uh, nail and screw holding power, packaging, furniture, uh, doors and windows. We need to have the nail, screw, uh, nail and screw holding power. So along, along with that, we have to uh, study what is called the wood working qualities of the timber, like turning, boring, planing, sanding, carving, easy, ease of working, polishing. These are the different properties which we need to study for different wood applications. So particularly, these are important for uh, handicrafts also, uh, when we want to see whether wood can be turned or it can be bored, sanding, is, uh, whether it will take good polish or not. These are the properties which uh, uh, we have to study as per the uh, Indian standards. So here, this table gives the comparison of these properties for uh, standard teak as well as for acacia aquiformis, around 15-year-old uh, uh, acacia aquiformis wood. So we, we can see from this table that acacia coliformis, many properties are either better than teak or either they are comparable to teak. So in that way, we can tell that acacia coliformis wood is one which is comparable to teak. 
And if we do proper uh, processing of the acacia oak polymerase, it can be used for uh, many applications and it can partially replace the teak, teak wood. Based on these properties, which we have to measure in different, uh, two different conditions, particularly green condition means when moisture is very high and in dry condition when wood is uh, air dried. And uh, based on these properties, we have to uh, compute what is called the suitability indices, whether wood is suitable for different applications or not. These are the 10 different suitability indices, strength as a beam, stiffness as a beam, suitability as a post, shock resisting ability, retention of shape, surface hardness, refractiveness, nail and screw holding powers. These are the, uh, as per this uh, procedure, we have to do that. Here I have just listed how the suitability indices of plantation grown acacia coliformis of different ages uh, vary. Uh, like eight to nine year old, 11 to 12 year old, and uh, 13 to 14 year old acacia coliformis. So we can see that uh, as the um, age increases, the, these uh, uh, different suitability indices have also been increased. The, uh, he, uh, these suitability indices have been compared with the teak and teak is taken as 100. So if one suitability indices, indices is more, uh, more than 100, it means uh, this particular property is better than teak. So uh, based on this comparison, we can uh, tell that uh, acacia coliformis wood gets the mechanical maturity particularly around 13 to 15 years of age. And after that, uh, there is no increase in, in the mechanical properties of the wood. What we will get is the increase in the biomass. So this is what is called the mechanical maturity and that can also be used for determining the uh, age, uh, rotation age. Now, based on this, we have to find out whether wood is suitable for different end users, like these are the different uh, end users, furniture, uh, construction, wood flooring, tool handles, composite sleepers, light packing cases, ammunition boxes. Uh, we have to compute uh, the uh, suitability figures for these um, as per the Indian standard. And then finally, this kind of information goes in uh, Indian standard, what is called the IS399. This is a general distribution of the timber for different end uses. So uh, that uh, particular IS is being used for uh, uh, knowing which wood is uh, good for what applications. Like here for furniture, uh, uh, as per the Indian standard 13622, uh, 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 different woods can be classified in the different groups. One is called super group, then group one, group two, group three, depending upon the strength coefficient uh, when teak is taken as 100. So super group uh, has the uh, strength coefficient greater than 75 and uh, uh, weight is uh, in between 85 to 110 and then grain is, uh, texture finish polish appearance of this group is very excellent examples of this group is like rosewood sisu padok teak these are the different 13 species have been listed in this group similarly group 1 and group 2 and group 3 uh, depending upon the uh, strength coefficient and uh, other uh, properties but here the condition is that uh, timber should be seasoned to the moisture of 10 plus minus 2 percent. This is very important. And if sapwood is uh, uh, being used, because sapwood is less durable compared to hardwood, so sapwood belongs to class 3 of the durability class. So it should be preservative treated as per the Indian standard uh, 401 if you want to use it for uh, this applications. Similarly, for construction, IS 3629, it gives the wood uh, into different groups, like group one, group two, group three, depending upon the mechanical properties of the wood. So a study of the mechanical properties is very important. Uh, but, uh, when we you want to use for doors and window shutters, then also we have to uh, classify it, uh, the wood in different groups, super group, group one, group two, group three, the different species uh, examples have been given here. And th that depends on the uh, modulus of rupture, that is the strength of the wood. So depending upon the strength of the wood, wood uh, given a wood can be classified into different uh, groups. Similarly for door frames also. Here examples have been given depending upon the MOR values. So uh, we can, uh, uh, say that construction, for construction, suppose we uh, we want to use the wood, then what are the properties which should be tested 
So sinkage, static bending, tensile strength, compressive uh, strength parallel to grain, or compressive strength perpendicular to grain, shear parallel to grain. So the different end uses requires a different set of uh, properties. Then only we can uh, uh, group the timber for whether it can be used for uh, this use or not. Similarly, for flooring, sinkage, uh, surface hardness, and static bending is required. For furniture, we need to know the weight, uh, sinkage, static bending, impact bending, tensile strength, compressive strength, as nail and screw holding power. And for packing cases, weight, hardness, static bending, impact bending, tensile strength, nail and screw. If you want to use the wood for pallets, then we need hardness and static bending, impact bending. Sports goods, again, because sports goods, a sudden force is applied on the sports goods, like uh, hockey or uh, cricket bat or similar similar other applications, then we need to know the hardness of the wood, impact bending, compression perpendicular to grain. These are the different applications where we need to uh, uh, know the different properties of the wood. Now, knowing the, these properties are very important. So I have given just a, here one example uh, of the uh, teak wood, particularly how uh, the age affects the uh, teak wood properties. Particularly the uh, plantation teak, uh, we know that teak uh, importance in India, it is being used for different applications, starting from door, uh, window frames, shutters, even any, any applications um, teak is being used for uh, in a uh, broad sense. So uh, teak is actually uh, light in uh, weight, but at the same time, it uh, has a very good strength properties. And that is, it has a very good dimensional stability because of the natural ex extractive present in the teak. It is very durable and weather resistant, warp resistant, it is easy to work, and it uh, takes a very good finish and quality of the product is very, uh, very uh, good. So these are the main uh, wood uh, traits which uh, teak has. And because of this, it can be used for different applications. And in India, teak is also being used as a standard. Uh, it is a benchmark uh, species. So all the other species need to be compared with the teak. So here I have given just example of long rotation teak and short rotation teak. Long rotation teak uh, is compared to different properties, uh, uh, 40 to 60 years and 15 to 25 years. So we can see the basic density uh, of the long rotation teak is quite high compared to short rotation teak. But uh, other properties are also high in long rotation teak. But, but uh, you, uh, here, the last uh, row is a uh, hardwood extractives. In uh, log rotation teak, the hard wood extractive which gives the durability and color to the teak is quite high compared to uh, short rotation teak, which is 4 to 5 percent only. And uh, in uh, log rotation teak, it is 12 to 14 percent. So uh, the wood uh, coming from the short rotation teak is not as durable as compared to uh, long rotation teak. This graph also showed the decay resistance against the fungi. You can see the long rotation teak, the weight loss is very less compared to uh, the weight loss because of the fungus uh, infection of the uh, short rotation teak. So, so Dr. Uh, uh, small intervention. Uh, yeah. Just a couple of days before uh, when this discussion happened, I think yeah. I could not remember uh, one, uh, one resource person was talking that the short rotation teak, there is not much difference between short rotation and hard rotation or long rotation teak. These properties are similar like that. Uh, it was there. I, I don't know. Is there any, really, there is any difference? I, because the second day, I think, second day, I think some uh, resource person said, uh, if uh, good quality teak is being uh, grown, even yeah. you can harvest even uh, 20 years or even up to 15 to 18 years, that is quality is not changing, the color is not changing, even the hardwood content is also similar like that uh, we have heard. I could not remember who has told. Uh, I don't know, it is conflicting things are being told, that's what I'm asking. No, it is not. Uh, I, I will just uh, go, go to next slide. I am going to show you the, the teak which is uh, being grown in different uh, management system also. There also I have tried to compare the uh, uh, teak well, uh, quality with the uh, 
Gatik, which is uh, uh, used as a standard. So in this table also, you can see the, the, the main difference is there in the uh, R2 text active. And that, that is what the, the makes the difference. You can see the market also where the teak is ca coming uh, from the Africa teak. Uh, it is uh, lower in price compared to the teak which is coming from Burma. So that uh, also reflects the quality of the uh, uh, teak wood. And the structure wise also, uh, teak and teak, uh, the, the anatomical structure is also quite different. So, uh, Within 25 years, there may not be much difference, but when we uh, try to compare it with the long rotation teak and short rotation teak, obviously there will be a, a difference. And uh, I, I will just give an example here, the wood quality uh, and growth and wood quality of the teak grown in under different uh, management practices in uh, uh, Karnataka. So we have uh, compared the teak of around 20 to 25 years of age which is uh, grown under uh, uh, three different management practices. One is the unmanaged block uh, plantation. Second is the partially managed line plantation. And third is the intensively managed uh, block plantation. So how the uh, wood quality of the, the, uh, the tea, which is grown in different uh, management practices is uh, compared, the biomass is compared, growth rate was compared, and finally, the, uh, the return return from these uh, plantations is also compared. So here is a picture of the unmanaged uh, black plantation. Is the location is near uh, Devanalli. Uh, the age was around 25 years. Uh, GBH 50 to 65 uh, variation. Specific was three by three. Uh, uh, no management was uh, given to this. That, that's why it is from the unmanaged black plantation. Second is the partially managed uh, line plantation. This is also near, near Devanalli, uh, the age was 25 years, 80 to 95 uh, is the GBH, spacing was 3 by 4, and this was partially managed uh, because it was one plantation, so it was uh, grown along with the other um, uh, crops. And third is the intensively managed uh, block plantation. Here, uh, it is the near, the location is Hoskote, 25, 4 to 25 years of age. The GBH was 10 to 100 centi uh, sorry, 80 to 100 centimeter. The spacing was four meter by four meter. And uh, it was intentionally managed with regular watering, uh, fertilization, and uh, uh, some kind of pruning. So this table uh, gives the uh, comparison between the, the three uh, types of management, uh, teak grown in tree management practices. You can see here the GBH is uh, quite different, particularly unmanaged uh, block plantation has the GBH quite less. Uh, it is like a pole compared to uh, this uh, managed, intensely managed, which was like 100, 100 cent, uh, centimeter. Similarly, the M MAI uh, mean annual increment was also quite different. And the specific gravity was uh, higher in case of unmanaged, uh, that is slow grown uh, timber, compare, uh, teak timber compared to uh, fast, fast grown, uh, intensively managed. Uh, some, uh, the hardwood and sapwood ratio, which is also important, the amount of hardwood which is present in the teak wood. So here you can see the ratio is 2.83 in case of unmanaged compared to uh, 171, uh, which was uh, intentionally managed. These graphs shows the hardwood to uh, sapwood uh, ratios. So intentionally managed uh, ha was having the uh, a smaller quantity of hardwood compared to sap uh, sapwood. Uh, it was around 40, 60. And uh, partially managed uh, was around 55 uh, to 45, and uh, uh, unmanaged was having around 65 to 35. That was the uh, kind of ra ratio of the hardwood. And uh, biomass, uh, we can see intentionally managed has the highest biomass compared to unmanaged. This is the growth uh, rate, cambial uh, grow, uh, age versus the average uh, ring, ring width. So we can see here, the, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the uh, intentionally managed ha has the highest growth rate compared to uh, other two, two types of plantations. This is the wood quality parameters, specific gravity. Uh, we can see here the unmanaged has the, obviously has the higher specific gravity compared to intentionally managed. But the, the, uh, this was not very significantly different. And this is the, uh, uh, forest teak, uh, the average value of the 
is a standard for a stick which we have compared. So, un 25 years old a, uh, age unmanaged uh, teak was having almost uh, similar uh, value, uh, uh, but but uh, fast grown uh, plantation, fast grown intensively managed uh, has the uh, significantly lower value compared to this one. Now, sinkage uh, properties were also compared between the two, and uh, we have found that unmanaged was having the lower sinkage compared to uh, managed one. Now, these are the mechanical properties which we had compared. Uh, MOR is the strength, and MOE the stiffness. Obviously, these uh, uh, managed uh, plantation grounds has the you know, have the smaller values uh, of the properties compared when we uh, compared with the standard teak. So, after that, we have uh, done the financial anal analysis of the uh, these uh, teak, which was grown under three different uh, plantation practices. And uh, we have compared the net present value, the uh, basic cost uh, versus uh, benefit versus uh, cost ratio, equivalent annual income, as well as the land expectation value. For different age groups, we have taken 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, and 40 years uh, of age and try to predict what is the uh, total income the farmer is going to get uh, when we uh, they are going to use these different types of uh, three different types of plantations. So these are the uh, conclusions which we have uh, drawn from this uh, study that although wood properties of the unmanaged plantations were uh, slightly superior uh, than the intensively managed block plantation and line plantation, but it was uh, uh, lower than the uh, forest teak values. Intensively managed uh, block plantation has yielded the higher uh, volume, uh, uh, wood volume, and comparatively better wood properties than line plantation, hence higher uh, returns at the age of the 25 years. Financial analysis also showed that uh, it is not advisable to keep the unmanaged block plantation beyond 40 years of age because uh, there was not much uh, growth and uh, the uh, uh, trunk was like a pole only. So it will not uh, fetch the higher price, and so there was no point in keeping it beyond the 40 years of age. So this kind of information can be used for the uh, by the teak growers. Uh, suppose they want to use the teak in, under different management practices for optimal utilization of the uh, for, uh, teak in agroforestry systems. So. Finally, we have uh, come come to the point that uh, the wood traits are. Uh, we have to focus on the wood traits which we need to uh, incorporate into the tree improvement programs, and uh, uh, we have we need to have the knowledge of with these wood traits. Unless we have the knowledge, we cannot uh, improve them. We have to, uh, by most of the uh, tree improvement especially, they want to uh, improve not only the yield, but also the uh, quality of the wood. So uh, better biomass and better quality, these two uh, the, is the focus to improve, but many times uh, the uh, it is not possible to uh, concentrate both, both uh, parameters together we have to focus on uh, the uh, tree, improvement, um, two, tree improvement, improvement programs for which purpose we are uh, trying to improve. Like we want to improve for the pulp and paper, or we want to improve the solid uh, wood applications, or we want to improve it for composite uh, wood applications. So these are the different parameters, which uh, again we have uh, tried to list it here. Like for pulp and paper, we have to focus mainly on the basic wood density, pulp yield, uh, cellulose content, and fiber length. These are the parameters if you want to have the tea improvement program for pulp and paper. Similarly, for uh, suppose we want to go for the sun wood uh, timber, then we have to focus on the density improvement and uh, microfiber angle uh, should not be too high. It should be uh, within the range of uh, 20 de degree. And then strength and stiffness, dimensional stability, shrinkage, tension wood, all these parameters need to be focused. And similarly, for composites, we have to focus on the basic wood density and the uh, chemicals of the wood. So uh, this is the uh, kind of cycle which generally the uh, tree improvement uh, 
specialists they follow this first is the selection then breeding testing and production and again uh, the cycle can be uh, followed for the improvement so we should have the knowledge of the um, degree of the genetic correlation between the wood traits and their importance in utilization so there are many wood traits uh, that might be improved by selection but more traits one try to improve uh, more one tends to dilute the genetic gain in particular uh, individual traits unless they are genetically intercorrelated so uh, therefore our selection and breeding should be focused on the improving a limited number of wood traits uh, uh, keeping in view the final application for what we want to uh, do the uh, improvement. So thank you very much uh, for uh, giving the opportunity to uh, share my results. Thank you.